So the first theme is really the foundation of 4D. Now, you all know that at a foundational core of 4D, it helps you make business applications, very good business application. That's its core foundational feature. So at that level, let's go ahead and talk about a, a core addition to the language. We have a new language type in 4D, objects. So Josh, in a 4D context, what is an object? What is an object? Yeah. And so as, as we start here, what I'm really asking first is, what do I want an object to be? If I'm going to have an object in 4D, how do I want it to behave? So I'm going to define this. I think, number one, using an analogy, and number two, in a way that makes sense to 4D developers, I think. So we're actually kind of comfortable with objects already in 4D. A record is an object. A record is a collection of variables bound together. So once you have data in those fields, it's a unique instance. But one of the really interesting things we can do with a database engine is make a more complex structure. So for example, my record might have related data. So a customer record that has a related address record that has a few fund records. So we can build some fairly complex things using the database engine. Now, the way, of course, the way we bind this all together in the database engine is we use relations. So that binding is one of the key things that I want to talk about next. Wouldn't it be nice to have something like this in the programming language? So here's some 4D code. It's three inner process variables. They're, let's say, preferences for a user, me. Now, the question is, what is the relationship between these three variables? And we know there really isn't one. As a good 4D developer, we try to imply a relationship, perhaps, with a consistent naming convention. So in this case, pref underscore user. But the fact remains, there's nothing that really binds these variables together. And as I add more variables, it gets more and more complex. It requires a lot more diligence on the part of the developer to keep this working, to keep this functioning. So I'll go back just to the simpler example, just those three variables. So with an object, what I want to do is I want to be able to take variables, but bind them together into a unique instance and have a reference to it, in this case, the Josh object. This almost starts to look like maybe like templating. So we can think about having a generic template, and from that template, create objects, the Josh object and the Lyle object. Hi, Lyle. Hi. But I think the most important thing right now is that the Josh object and the Lyle object are completely separate. They have nothing to do with one another <laughs> at all. OK. I got the hint. Very, very important. Now, I use the word templating. But the fact is, I don't want to be restricted to a specific template. I want to be able to modify the structure of an object. So for example, to add a field, to remove a field, a variable, a field. In fact, I don't even want to be limited to just simple types. But what about objects within objects, or arrays within objects? So that's sort of the last step. So taken all together, here's what I want objects to be. It's a collection of variables, or perhaps other objects. I can modify the schema. I can add and remove values from that object. It doesn't have any fixed schema. Each instance is bound together. And, and most importantly, because each instance is therefore unique. That's what I want an object to be. So let's talk about what we decided to do. Objects in 4D is a new type. It's called C object. It adds to this list. Now, C object, of course, being a new variable type uh, of a language, has a whole bunch of commands around it. But let's take a look at some code to create a new C object. 
We are defining the LR object here at the top as a C object, and then we're allow allowed to set things to it. You can kind of think of it like an array. In an array, when you add values to it, you use the index number. That's all you have as a key to the value that you're putting in. In objects, instead, you use names for those, or the keys are actually strings. So here, you can see that first set, OB set, uses first name as the key and assigns it Laurent <coughs> after our founder. And down a couple, you'll see that we have an OB set array. In this situation, the FIB, or short for Fibonacci, is an array of Fibonacci sequence. So you can have complex variable uh, values as well. But the keys themselves are strings, which is nice for understanding what you're doing in the object. So with C object, we have a whole new theme um, of commands. So we can copy them and get them and set them, all the things you'd think you'd be able to do, of course. Additionally, it's very easy to send data in and out of a C object as text. And we use these two commands to do that, JSON parse and JSON stringify. So the question you might be asking is, JSON? Who's, J who's JSON? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> JSON is, actually stands for JavaScript Object Notation. But it's been implemented in many, many languages, and it's extremely popular. It is the choice right now for data exchange on the web, and it gets more popular all the time. Including now, all the implementations we've seen of JSON, we now see implementation inside 4D. And that's actually the backbone of what a C object is when you send data into it and send data out of it. So let me show you what this text looks so, like. So you're saying we, we stole yeah. something. <laughs> you know, good engineers steal, right? Um, and that's what we've done. We've just basically used this format. And we'll see some really good reasons of why. So JSON as text is a text format. You see that this, this curly bracket, the very top character, and the very bottom character, the closing bracket, that defines an object. And then here you have the key values, as we had in our last example, using the set, OB set uh, methods in 4D. So that structure allows you to have text, arrays, we have a Boolean there, and we have an integer. So as you can see, it's a very clean format for describing so, it. This is similar to XML, but right. much less verbose. It looks like, so it looks like JavaScript but what you're saying is it's actually just a generic object notation. Yeah, it's just a way to get objects into text and back out of text. Mm. So let's go ahead and take a look at an example of using C object inside your 4D code. Not yet. One second. We're actually not there yet. Let's swap back. Adds Josh. in a hurry. <laughs> okay, a sim simple example to start with. I have a question. How many people have methods that take parameters? <laughs> wow, everybody, amazing. It's a test to see how many people can understand what yes. I'm saying. <laughs> Lyle, do you have methods I, that take parameters? I don't even do 40 code, and yes, I have methods that take parameters. Okay, so we have a, a method here. It doesn't do anything, but it accepts some parameters. I've got a text, a long int, and a boolean. Now, that boolean, I consider it to be optional. And you know that the way we do optional parameters in 4D is they have to be passed last. They have to be the last parameter. So one question. What happens if I want to add a new parameter to this method? Well, since I had an optional parameter in $3, I can't really add another required parameter as $4. In fact, I have to reorder the code and, of course, have a new block of code to handle that new incoming parameter. And, and Josh, everywhere you called that method, all throughout your application, yeah. you're going to have to change the parameter list in that so as well. The, the biggest work is I have to refactor every place that I use that method and change the order of the parameters or add the new parameter. What if we use a C object instead of passing individual parameters. So we have one parameter to the method. No matter how many different things I pass in, I'm always going to pass just one parameter. 
if I decide to change the method, so let's say I no longer need the second parameter, of course I have to delete the code within the method that deals with that parameter. But I don't necessarily have to go off and refactor everything that called it. It depended, depends if the callers were using that parameter or not. So C object brings an interesting flexibility to parameter passing. And we can look to see another example of that. In the original example, I was accessing the parameters in order. So first, second, third. But with C object, I don't have to do that because I can use the key to access whatever I want. I can actually access the second parameter first and the first parameter second or in any order that I want. So it's very flexible that way. So that's one aspect. We can pass a C object as a parameter. But maybe something more exciting for 40 developers. What about being able to return a C object? It's a new type in, in 40. It's supported natively in 40. Of course, I can return C object from a method. In this example, what I'm doing is checking to see which parameters were passed. And if you don't pass the first one or the second one, I give you a unique error message. And then I'd be able to check that in the caller. And what's interesting, of course, is you are returning one thing. That's how we return methods, uh, values and methods. Mm. But that one thing has a few objects inside. Yeah. Error, error returning is a perfect case of that because you don't know from the start. You, you don't want to only return one error because yeah. then the second time the user goes through, then you've got to do it again. Yeah. So in this situation, you can stack up the values. Mm. Really great. Yeah. OK, so that's uh, just a basic example of what we can do with C object. We're going to look at some more. Yeah, and, and this example, of course, is code that we're dealing with inside your programming language. But we're actually using it throughout 4D as well. So let's look at it being used inside a new feature of 4D. So in v14, we have a new query editor. Yay. <laughs> it's, um, it's been designed to be more modern, to, to, to be more flexible. But there's some specific things that I would like to look at uh, in terms of uh, talking about C object. So, the, so it does what you expect. You create a query, you execute the query, you get some data. So let's look at uh, building a query. Now, what I want to focus on is the operators. So for example, we're going to choose a text variable first, a text field, rather. Sorry. Now, if we look at the operator list, we get things that we expect, like is or contains, starts with, ends with. So we'll go ahead and fill in the value here. So the company state is California. Let's go ahead and add another constraint. This time we're going to choose a Boolean field instead of a text field. And for the operators, we'll have is and is not and no, contains. No, no, let's not do that. Oh. Let's do just what is valid for a it's a boolean. Object. Yeah, it's a boolean. True and false. Absolutely. Right? So you can see this is listening to what you're doing and giving you better feedback and, so of course, giving you better choice. In intelligent better filtering of the operators that you have available. Now, we've actually taken that a step further in this dialog. So we'll do one more constraint. And we'll do a date field. No. At the first layer, what's interesting, if we expand that, we have things like is today, is yesterday. Cool. There's one in particular we're going to use here. It's is within next, or is, uh, sorry, is within last. And now we get a, 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 an extra layer of filtered constraints. We can do who, is within last week. Who has written week. this kind of date code before? <laughs> where you are like, I just need to have a last week built in. Very nice. Yeah. So we'll do is within the last quarter, say. And it automatically gives us the date range. We run the query, and there's the data. Behaves as you would expect. OK, one more feature I want to talk about. Let's open up the query editor again. And up on the top there, you see a little button labeled Recent Queries. So the query editor actually has a history of your most recently executed queries. You know, Josh. Hold on. One we more. Okay. One, one more thing. One more thing. All right. Hold on. <laughs> so just so you see, as add selects 
a different query, it automatically populates the query editor with the fields and the constraints and the values that he had been using. Okay. You had a question. Oh, yes. We were talking about a core fundamental change to the 4D language, mm. adding new objects. Mm. And we said, and now let's look at C object inside, and now we're talking about querying. What's going on? <laughs> so what is a query? A query is a, oh, I see. So what's interesting about a query is that as a user decides to choose all of these things, the different attributes they're going to check on and the different um, so any number, second, any number of tables. Yeah, any number of tables, any number of any fields. fields, any numbers of types. As they build that, what they're actually building is schema lists. There's no definition beforehand. As they create this data fragment, which is the query, the, it's being produced on the fly. And therefore, there's no way to predetermine that. It's a perfect case for an object. Let's look into it a little bit further. So yeah, the point let's, is, let's inspect it more. The query in the new query editor behind the scenes is a C object. And so we can see that. We'll actually export this query to a text file. So we'll save it. It's still a, a 4DF file, so that hasn't changed. We'll open that in a text editor instead of the hex editor. And, and this is JSON, right? This is a text format of an object, which you can read and understand. What's nice about this, this is kind of how I conceptualize C objects. Of course, it's a, it's a more complicated structure in the data engine, or in the language itself. But this is how you can conceptualize in your mind. What's wonderful about us being able to save the query itself as JSON, you can also import it back in. So if one of your users needs a very specific search and, or query, you can build it somewhere else and email it to them. You could potentially generate query systems through an application, creating your own C object structure and import them. And you can use it in other um, programming environments because, of course, this is a standard language now, right? A standard way of passing data around. I love you, Jason. I love C object, <laughs> actually, I gotta say. Okay, let's Come go on. back to the slides. So, Interestingly enough, you've seen now two examples of using C object. One, the parameter passing or return values. The other, a new query editor. We solved two completely separate issues with the same feature. And so what was interesting as we developed the keynote is we started using C object all over the place. You can solve a lot of different problems with C object. It's one of those features that you didn't know you, you missed it. Now that you have it, you start finding all different kinds of ways to use it. So it becomes ubiquitous in your development and also ubiquitous for us at 4D. We actually use C object within 4D itself. So you just saw one example, which is the new query editor. Other things we have, like internally, we have a dynamic key value pair storage. It's using C object. The plugin SDK has been updated to support it. And there's some features here that we're actually going to talk about today, like the real time monitor, the web area, of, and a small one, a little feature called 4D Mobile that we'll talk about later. So, what I want to say for now, we're going to talk about C object some more as we move through the keynote because we used it all over the place. For the moment, let's leave it with, it's very powerful. C object is a new type in 4D. That doesn't happen very often. It's very flexible. We saw with the parameter passing example, there's a lot of flexibility in something that has no schema. It's very convenient because it is a native type, because it has 4D commands to deal with. It's not an external tool. It's very convenient to use. 